Animal health specialist Kerry Moa is investigating the mysterious deaths of 113 elk on a ranch in New Mexico. And he's identified a terrifying possibility, anthrax. Anthrax is a lethal bacterium that occurs naturally and can remain dormant in soil for decades until it is ingested by grazing animals. Farming and hunting is big business in New Mexico, and an anthrax outbreak could spell commercial disaster. Further still, anthrax is as lethal to humans as it is to animals. An outbreak of anthrax poisoning could be catastrophic. It's such an effective killer, the spores are used in biological warfare. They can produce toxins that actually destroy various aspects of our body, our clotting system, our kidneys, our liver, our lungs, our heart. If anthrax is to blame, then Kerry Mauer's life and the lives of countless others are now in danger. And the clock is ticking. By opening all of these animals like I did, I would have exposed myself and everyone around me uh, to the anthrax spores. Terrified by the possibility of anthrax infection, Kerry rushes the samples to the pathology lab in Albuquerque. We bumped him to the front of the list. If anthrax is present, we're looking for that particular DNA. We're looking for a specific gene sequence. Using tissue from the liver and lungs, they'll look inside the cells for traces of anthrax DNA. It's an agonizing wait. However, hours later, Kerry gets a call from the lab. They told me that it was not anthrax, <laughs> which was pretty good news to me. Obviously, that's a great relief. But the mystery expands. The, you know, the doors are flung wide open now. And, and so the, the, the pressure on us is to find out what caused a massive die-off. What is killing New Mexico's elk? It's getting harder to fathom. Is the killer a danger to all of the state's inhabitants? Kerry isn't the only one who feels that the algae explanation doesn't fit. Ex-Sheriff Chuck Sikowski has spent decades investigating unusual animal deaths. He instantly spots a flaw in the anatoxin theory. The interesting thing about this particular case was there was no other animals involved. You would expect that there was toxins in any type of water source. We would have found dead deer, they would have found dead birds somewhere, but just elk, it just doesn't make sense. If Chuck is right and the official findings are wrong, what killed the elk? I think the possibility is UFOs might have been related to the elk incident. Chuck suspects a conspiracy. All of the available evidence is reviewed to see if there could be another explanation. And Chuck spots something in news footage that others have missed. When I was watching it, I noticed something really unusual that looked like a crop circle. And I thought it was quite odd that there would be a crop circle in the same area where all the elk died. Crop circles are found across North and South America and in Europe. In 2009, Professor Lakazar Filipov of the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences makes headlines, disputing the orthodox idea they are man-made by claiming they are a form of extraterrestrial communication. Researcher Charles Mallet has investigated 800 crop circles in 20 years. At least 90% of those circles which I've examined are clearly man-made and the evidence is clearly available on the ground. In these cases, crops are deliberately flattened. Mallet claims the remaining one in 10 cannot be explained this way. When we go to a crop circle and we can see no breaking in the stems, no scraping of the stems. All the flowers are still in place and the plants are growing in perfect health, horizontal along the ground. That implies that there's no physical action taking place at that location. Similarly to the Bulgarian scientist, Professor Filipov, Mallet believes these crop circles are created by an alien intelligence and energy force. Some other kind of process has taken place which seems to be potentially energetic in nature rather than physical. 
Mallet's investigations reveal a link between the crop circles and disturbing incidences of animal mutilation. There are a number of cases where swirled grasses and crops have been flattened to the ground in very close proximity to the infamous cattle mutilation cases in North America. The evidence and the science implies that there is um, some kind of connection. Chuck is on his way to an area just 160 kilometers from where the elk were found to meet rancher Mike Duran. Mike witnesses what he believes to be UFO activity just a few days before he found his cattle mutilated. I was coming up one evening, it was about 4.30 in the evening, and I looked up in the sky and it was a real bright light. And it just went until it just went out of sight. Mike, do you believe that UFOs are related to animal mutilations? I believe they are. I've seen the lights, and then later we have the mutilations. I believe that there is some uh, connection. With this testimony, Chuck has a connection between UFOs and attacks on cattle near where the elk died. Chuck's colleague, Ruben Uriart, investigated the case connecting UFOs and elk. The event occurred approximately in 1999 in the remote mountains of uh, Washington State. We were able to interview the main witness and do an audio taping of the entire interview. Forestry workers claim to witness a strange object appear over the horizon. The object doesn't fall and land. Instead, it moves to a nearby herd of elk. The amazed workers watch as the object grabs a lone elk. And carries it off into the sky. We do have an artist's rendition of the object. The object was changing color from red to white, red to white. Very unusual, but uh, very mysterious. With reports suggesting that UFOs are responsible for abducting elk and mutilating cattle, could they also be responsible for the death of the elk on the New Mexico ranch? Is that why the authorities are so quick to close the case?